Welcome back to the Bobcat Hockey Coaches Show on Super Talk 1270. Paul Teeple here with you. Rejoined momentarily by Bobcats head coach and general manager Lane Sedevi. But as we always do here for our second segment, we turn things over to the players. And joining us first uh, from Birmingham, Michigan, Bobcats goaltender and second year NAHL veteran Will Ulrich is with us. Will, how's it going, buddy? Uh, it's going well. How are you, Paul? Not too bad at all. And uh, we have to start out by doing some breaking news to prove to everybody that I got a journalism degree for something. Breaking news here on the Bobcat Hockey Coaches Show right now is uh, that uh, the man we're talking to right now, Will Ulrich, has committed to uh, play Division One hockey at the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Will, congrats. Oh, thanks, Paul. Uh, it means a lot. Um... Obviously, it's really exciting to, to you know, every every little kid's dreams to play Division One college hockey, and uh, for me, that uh, that dreams come true, and uh, it's a lot of a lot of hard work and adversity, but um, you know, I'm surrounded by great people here in uh, in Bismarck, and you know, I'm able able to have uh, great things happen like that. And Air Force is a very strong school for NAHL players. Uh, uh, Jock Lamoureux uh, from the Bobcats went there. Casey Kleisinger, Jason Fabian, Evan Giesler is there now. Dan Weisenhofer just graduated uh, a couple of years ago uh, from Air Force, all former Bobcats. It, it, I, I love how much Air Force is able to uh, take NAHL guys and, and develop them. Uh, was that something that uh, kind of uh, drew you to the Falcons? Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing, uh, obviously, the academy is just a little different than a typical uh, college program. You have to uh, adhere to the military life and, you know, to be successful from what, what I've learned talking to, you know, especially some of the former Bobcat players uh, like Evan Giesler and Joey Tyron. Uh, you just have to have to embrace it, and especially being uh, – you know, a twenty-year-old guy like myself, I think, uh, and living at, living away from home for the past three years, I think it's uh, that definitely helps with going off to a place like Air Force, um, and you know, being away from home and stuff like that. With all the junior hockey, doesn't doesn't bother me at all. So, uh, I think uh, obviously they have a great reputation, especially with players in this league, known especially for being uh, hardworking, blue-collar type of hockey players. And, uh, you know, that, that was one of the reasons why I really, really liked Air Force a lot. Being able to commit in November, uh, not something that you often see in the North American Hockey League, a league that generally gets commits later uh, into the spring uh, of the season. Uh, being able to know what you're doing uh, for next year this early in the season, I have to imagine that that is a tremendous weight off the mind. Yeah, uh, no, I totally agree uh, with what you said. It's a big, big weight off my back. So, um, you know, there's no uncertainty, uncertainty about where where I'll be headed next year. Um, you know, if and worrying about playing well for for schools to see me. Now that um, it's all settled, uh, and I'm you know I'm extremely excited to to attend a, a, such a prestigious place like the Air Force Academy. Um, now, uh, you know, just the goal is to help the team, uh, you know, win, give a chance, give it, the team a chance to win every night and get two points and hopefully uh, win the Central Division and, uh, you know, lead to a long playoff run. With your commitment to Air Force, that now makes 12 straight Bobcat teams dating back to 2005-2006 with Tim Christosik, uh, who, by the way, went to Air Force, uh, have had at least one goalie from the roster commit to a Division I program. When you hear about that kind of streak, uh, what does that make you uh, think of the program uh, that you're a part of this season? Um, you know, obviously the Bobcats, with this being our 20th anniversary, um, especially with goaltenders, they've done... Um, uh, Coach Sedevi has done an incredible job, uh, you know, promoting his guys and helping them get better as the season goes on so that, um, you know, so we can get opportunities to play at the next level, Division One, uh, like every other kid in this league wants to. So, uh, you know, especially when I got traded here over the summer, I was really excited to come in and work work with uh, work with Coach Sedevi and uh, – because I knew he's had a great track record, and you know, obviously this this just reaffirms it. 
last weekend you guys uh, split a pair of games, uh, lost at home on Saturday, but winning on Thursday in Minot. How nice was it for you guys to go up to their big grand opening party for the Pepsi rink inside the Mesa and play a little bit of spoiler up there? <laughs> Uh, it was a it was a real real good feeling, really really big win for us because uh, the previous two weekends uh, definitely hadn't gone our way. But you know, uh, it's, just, it's the ebbs and flows of, of the hockey season. It's a long season. We still got more than forty games left. But uh, going up to, going up to Minot against you know our our top rival in this division uh, and playing in their brand new nineteen million dollar facility, which was just absolutely incredible. It's a great feeling, you know. You just get a great, great atmosphere to play junior hockey in, and uh, you know we had, we we jumped up onto an early lead there, and uh, you know the guy got obviously you know mine. It's always going to battle battle back and play hard, so it was really big for us to get the two points up there, and uh, I really look forward to playing up there uh, in that rink the rest of the season. Uh, it's really exciting to be there uh, with that type type of atmosphere and energy. Big first period on Thursday, uh, a big close to the third period on Saturday against the Wilderness that just came up a little bit short. What lessons uh, do you think that the team learned uh, from those two games uh, by contrast of the previous two weeks on the road? Um, I mean, obviously, I think our team at least, uh, you know, we have a bit of a younger team than what the Bobcats had last year. So um, we're still only – we're in the third month of the season. So, guys – you know, it, it's a little, little bit of baby steps, but guys are, you know, slowly maturing. Um, so I understand, uh, you know, you have to be able to play both at home and when on a, you know, in a tough road atmosphere. And uh, so, I mean, we're, we're making progress, but, uh, you know, we're not, definitely not, not at the finished product yet. So that's what the, the entire season's for. You don't want to peak in November you want to wait till April once playoffs uh, roll around that's when it really really counts this weekend home against Minot and fans you can buy and print your tickets online right now at bismarckbobcats.com or charge by phone at 222-3300 before the first trip of the year down to Brookings uh, let's talk about the team that you just saw sit uh, Six days ago, excuse me, uh, up at the Mesa. Your first uh, home look at Minot, who uh, came out uh, uh, on fire after that and uh, proceeded to drop 14 goals over the next two nights uh, to bounce back with a couple of wins. Uh, what does the team need to do uh, to try and corral this Minot offensive machine? Um, I think, you know, I'll come out, uh, obviously, first period at home, uh, you know, you use the, the atmosphere and the fans cheering for you. Definitely use that to your advantage uh, and make sure play, playing hard every shift, especially a team like Mina, who's, you know, they're a very talented club this year. You, can, you can't take a shift off or else, uh, or else you'll be down a goal. So, um, so I was just playing hard, playing smart and uh, make, making, making the right, right plays out there on the ice. Uh, and, uh, you know, trying to stay out of the box. That's those are real, real big keys to playing against Minot, who uh, definitely a bit of an offensive juggernaut this year. And Minot scored three goals in the second period uh, on Thursday. And uh, the second period, uh, the coach has been saying for a couple weeks now, have been uh, a big problem for this team. Do you think that's a mental thing? Yeah, I mean, at this level, you know, every team pretty much is really close skill wise, and at the end of the day, it's just. Uh, you know, you, you can't get down after giving up a goal. It's it's hockey. Everyone uh, everyone gives up goals. That's just the the, the how the game is. So uh, it's just showing some mental fortitude uh, to get through that and make sure you're always battling because as soon as you give up, that's that's when the game's over. Uh, you always always have to uh, be playing hard. And, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because that was something that I noticed in Minot on Thursday is that after Minot was able to get that fourth goal and get back within one late in the game, it seemed like you were able to keep calm and kind of just forget about that goal and make Minot one and done on all their offensive chances. Is that your mentality just to, you know, okay, that goal's done, forget it and move on? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I – I played goalie uh for you know i'm 20 years old i've been playing since i was five years old i've i've given up a lot of goals uh <laughs> so uh you know so so is everyone uh 
who, who's been playing for that long and plays at a, at a high level uh, of junior hockey. Um, so you, you just have to, you know, worry about making the next save because as soon as you, you think about what you should have, should have, could have, would have done, then that, that's when you uh, find problems, especially uh, as a goaltender with it being such a, you know, such a big mental aspect to the game. Brookings is the team on Saturday. A lot of young talent on that team. Uh, you uh, saw them when they came up to the VFW Sports Center uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, what's your read uh, on this young uh, dark horse Brookings team? Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, you're 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 right when you said they're they're definitely a young team, but they they have talent. So, um, especially in the Central Division, year in year out, every team's good, and it's always such a tight uh, tight race. Uh, throughout the year so you, you can't take any team lightly no matter if they're all 20 year olds or all 17 year olds uh, or yeah or if there's a lot uh, on their team so I mean they got skill so we, we have to play hard and play our game and um, I mean they, they had a good game because it was only a one goal game when we played them a few weeks ago at home and uh, especially in Brookings, uh, we have to come out strong and play hard and you know can't can't take anything for granted in this league. Now, you're a Detroit guy. All of a sudden, the Lions are looking like they're the team to beat in the NFC North. You, you smelling playoffs again this year for the Honolulu Blue? Uh, well, you know, being a Lions fan is always tough. I know. <laughs> uh, you know, the pain be, being a Browns fan, uh, you know, especially as a Lions fan, you always you always say you can never get your, your hopes hopes up too high because there's some way or another you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. Um, even with uh, how Stafford's playing this year, um, we're, you know it's probably the worst division in the league. But playoff spots a playoff spot, and they're still uh, still got seven games left in the season. So now you're in a locker room full of Vikings fans. Are you going to be a little mouthy if the if the Lions end up winning the division? Are you going to try and keep your head down because of uh, oh. because of the Vikings fans? <laughs> Oh uh, no, they they won't hear the end of it. <laughs> uh, boy. Uh, like, yeah, like I, like I don't hear the end of it about you know how great Minnesota is and how it's the best state, uh, in the you know it's the best state in the in the lower the lower forty eight. So, uh, so no no they they won't hear the end of it, especially my roommate Parker Mismash. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, Will, thank you very much uh, uh, for sharing a little time. Congratulations on your commitment to Air Force, and good luck this weekend against Minot and Brookings. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks, Paul. It really uh, means a lot. So I'm looking forward to uh, focusing on the team and uh, you know helping us get four points this weekend. Absolutely. We're going to jump out for a commercial break. The Coaches Show continues after this. Don't forget, buy and print your tickets online right now uh, at BismarckBobcats.com for Friday Night Bobcats and Minotaurs for the first time at home this year. We'll be back after this from the Tappan Tavern on Super Tavern.